get ready for Host at Home. On today's show, she's a sitcom star from hit shows like Reba and Baby Daddy. But she's also a hostess with a mostest. At the helm of shows like The Singing Bee and Bet on Your Baby, Melissa Peterman joins us. And now, here's your host who interviews the host, Adam Wurzel. Thank you, Richard Malmus. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Hosts at Home. I'm Adam Wurzel. So happy you're with us. We are so excited because on today's Hosts at Home, this woman, not just one of the funniest hosts in show business. She is one of the funniest women you will ever meet. We are so excited. Melissa Peterman's joining us. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Adam. Thank you for that, that wonderful intro. I haven't been introed in like 10 weeks, well, actually longer, and it just really made my day. I almost turned up a little bit, a little bit. Well, they're, they're happy tears, though. Who knows anymore? We don't know. It's, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Sometimes I cry just for no reason, but it's mostly happy, mostly happy. I've got nothing to complain about. Melissa, where is home for you? Tell everybody. I am in Los Angeles, California. And you but my home home is like Minnesota. So we, I, I mean, I've been living in LA for like 20 plus years, but I still, and I love LA. It's, it's my home too, but Minnesota is sort of my hometown too as well. Do you miss the snow? No, um, <laughs> I do for I do for Christmas and like holidays. I love to come home and see the snow, and uh, I do miss that a little bit. I like I miss seasons sometimes, you know, because sometimes it's always so sunny. But although today we have rain, so it feels super special. But um, I don't miss snow in April. I don't miss snow in February. I don't miss having to shovel a car out in March. So no, that part I don't miss. Tell everybody about your family. They're with me all the time right now. So that's what that's happening. They're here a lot. They're close by. Well, at least my immediate family. My husband and my son are here and in LA with me and the dogs. Right now we're all together. Although my husband's on his way to take a little walk now. God, get out. So you're, <laughs> so you're with your family all the time, especially right yeah. now. We have I have a 14 year old son. So what teenager does not want to spend all of his time with his parents? He's loving it. He loves it. We didn't sign up for this. I used to joke that if I had a homeschool, I would have substitute teachers every day. Like, there's no way I could do it, ever. Melissa, we've watched you play a lot of different game shows, multiple versions of Pyramid. Are you playing games at home now with your family? People don't. Well, you see, since you've seen me play, you realize I'm so competitive. So no one really enjoys playing games with me at home because I get so intense. I mean, I'm great on a show because I will do anything to get my contestant to win. But at home, not so much. Not enjoyable when I start shrieking. Um, but we have. I will say we finally played Monopoly uh, with my son. And then we also played uh, Yahtzee. We brought back the old Yahtzee. And um, what else? Playing like, oh, we have fun games like, what time will mom get up? Or, you know, uh, <laughs> those kind of fun games. Of all the game shows you've ever been on, do you have a favorite? Pyramid with Donny Osmond, um, because it was Donny Osmond. And it, that was just surreal to me to be like, oh, it's Donny Osmond. And I love that game. I love Pyramid. That was a uh, super, I, there, it was just a classic game show. I got to do Hollywood Squares when it was that, which was in like, just, it felt like I was a kid, you know, watching that my whole life. And that was super cool. And I just remember like getting there and, you know, thinking, you know, when you watch it, like it looks so big and giant. And I remember I felt like we just climbed up a ladder and like sat behind like a kind of a rickety like square, but it still was amazing and cool. Well, I'm loving right now, 25 words or less. That's been, uh, I love that game because it feels like a game that we know, which is getting, which is sort of the password feel, but then there's that added thing of the, the bet of how, how many words, how, how little you can, how, li how few words you can use. Do you consider yourself the modern day Betty White? Even to put myself in the same sentence as, as Betty White, I don't feel like I have the gravitas to say. If you're talking about somebody who likes to be on game shows and appeared regularly, I would say, Yes. Although, fun fact, I did have her dressing room. 
I had Betty White's dressing room because um, it was when we were filming Baby Daddy, we were in the same lot as Hot in Cleveland. And so I got, when they moved, when we moved one year, we moved like dressing room. So I got hers. So I asked Miss White if she would uh, sign a picture because we had a picture of, of us and our cast together. And I have it downstairs and it's Betty. She goes, this dressing room will always be mine, Betty White, which was hilarious. But she's, she's just, she's a queen. She's the queen. Of course, one of the other shows you were on, Worst Cooks in America, you were runner up. So the question here, since we're all home right now, do you have a signature dish that you've been making for the family? I made my own soft serve ice cream, which I thought was super fun. Yeah, you can do it, you guys. It's frozen bananas, Cool Whip, a little bit of maybe vanilla sugar, whatever you want, and you blend it. And because the Cool Whip is so airy and the frozen bananas get creamy, it literally is like soft serve ice cream. Melissa, I live in Nashville where people idolize Reba, both, both the country star and the sitcom. How did this mini reboot of Reba come about? I was bored <laughs> and I was texting her and she, and I said, Hey, if I send you a little video, will you like respond to it and like do something? She's like, okay. Hey Reba, it's me again, Barbara Jean. Just wanted to check in and see how you're holding up during this quarantine. Kids have been wanting me to play games all day long. I've played more games than you can imagine. You know how much I like games, but I'm sick of it. We should be doing more. I, it's, it's hard because like you feel really creative and fun one day and the next day you're like, I'm just gonna lie down and eat soup. The good thing about Reba is that usually after the, how many years of us being friends, like when I ask her to do something, she usually just goes, okay. Hey, hey, I'm Melissa Peterman and welcome to the Singing Bee on CMT. When you took over the Singing Bee, because Joey Fatone did it for the first mm -hmm. couple seasons, which way did you go? Did you watch those episodes beforehand or did you say, no, I want to put my own spin spin on this show? I watched it because I love game shows. So I had seen it because I just, you know, I love any game shows. But no, I, you know, and the thing about, and I, I know Joey, he's such a good guy. And also we had spun it a little bit towards more country music. And so we were making our own imprint on it anyway. So I wasn't, I didn't really worry about making it too much. Although a lot of people, I get mistaken for him a lot, depending on just what I'm wearing that day. I get mistaken for Joey. Um, no, I really just felt like we were gonna make our own spin. And once we added our band, Steve Dorff and, and the Beehive, and then we brought in our, it just started coming together as our own vibe anyway. And I have to mention this because my wife Carly is a publicist here in Nashville. She does country PR. Her business partner was on your version of the singing bee and has the record on that show. She didn't miss one. Are you kidding one. me? No, she won $10,000. She's the only person who did not miss one thing. Chelsea is her name. Shout out. Hello, Chelsea. Chelsea, shout out to you. That's amazing. So let's talk about I'm one still, I'm still Facebook friends with so many contestants from Singing Bee. That's amazing. Like, it's amazing that you're that open that you will accept Facebook friend requests from contestants. Of course. We shared a game show together. Game shows are the bridge that brings us together, people. After all these years of watching game shows, finally getting to host your own, how special was that? It felt like a dream come true. I sort of felt like it was very surreal. And I kind of had to say, like, you know, when people would say, well, how would you like to do this? And I could believe I got to be the one to say that or answer it. Um, it, it was really exciting. Like, I was really proud and excited and nervous, obviously, because you'd want to, you want to do a good job. And, and because I loved game shows, but I, I truly approached every hosting job that I did. My only job was to make sure that the contestants shine and that they felt like they were having a good time. Like that sort of helped me like just as I watched some of the greatest, the hosts that I admired and you watch them do it and, and everyone goes, oh, it's so easy. And it's not really that, that easy. But the ones that are the best are the ones that it's not really about the host at all. Like my job. And so I always, I always made sure I went and um, introduced myself to the contestants before we played, before the show started. Like I wanted, I wanted to go like, hey, by the way, every person is funny. Every person has a story. Every person should shine. So I just wanted, once I sort of just decided it's really not even about me, it's about making sure everyone has the best time. And because this is the show they're going to show their family every, you know, every time they have a get together, they're like, remember when you were on or they're going to do that. So I was like, this is their time. Like they should, it should be awesome for them. So that was very helpful. Of course, one of the other shows that you did, which we loved was a show called Bet on Your Baby. As a mom, how special was a show like that to host? 
That's one that I really feel we could, it should have gone on a little more because it was, we were starting to sort of mesh into, it was the game, it was the parents, and it was also a little bit of kids say the, the darndest things because that was sort of, I, I wanted to come in and go, by the way, we've got toddlers who are the funniest improvisers you're ever going to meet. They don't have an editor. They don't care. They are not worried about how they look like as far. So I was like, we've got to be taping these little interstitials in between the game of these kids. And that's where I got, you know, Ryder to crank call, you know, Barbara Walters, or we would. So I love those moments with the kids because again, kids are your best comedy partner because they're not going to edit. So I love that. I loved the parents and I love that they were winning money for college. So it was so much fun. It was one of them. It was, and by the way, nobody can be grumpy on a set where there's children. Like that was the other thing is like when you've got like toddlers around, no one's going to walk and be like, Oh, I can't believe like, cause Oh, hi little one. Like you just can't. I've always felt that on your baby, it had the big money game show feel like the who wants to be a millionaire lights. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like two shows in one. Because when you go to the baby dome and it seemed like a completely different, like almost uh, hidden camera, yeah. different, completely different production vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I thought it would be a, a fun thing right now since you do have a piece of paper. Should we do a quick super match for match game and see if we can match? Yeah, let's do it. All right. I got my pen. Blank wash. W-A-S-H. Blank wash. Let's see if we match. It's a lifelong dream to play match game with you, Melissa Peterman. Oh man, I said car. Face. Uh, see, this was was this was this the total? Are we did, did we just go back to like the stereotypes that man is car and woman is like face or not? <laughs> I uh, maybe, know that. maybe because I'm out of face wash. And my wife has me do this like five step regimen every night. I should have guessed face wash. It would have been. Well, I was going to say you're absolutely glowing. You just <laughs> Thank look. You. You're glowing. When Melissa is not hosting fantastic shows, she plays Brenda Sparks on the CBS sitcom Young Sheldon, which is one of my favorite shows. I love the Big Bang, Big Bang Theory. I think I might like Young Sheldon even more, actually. Talk about being on this show and being part of this incredible cast. I was so nervous that first day that I, the first Brenda scene I did, which was at the bowling alley with, uh, it was going to be with Zoe and Annie Potts. We're both going to be in this first scene. And I was a nervous wreck because you know it's it's a Chuck Lorre show it's such a good show and so well written like you don't want to mess up their words or you know and when you're a guest star you're sort of like ah I'm, I'm just I, I'm not this isn't my house like let's you know and I remember once we got that first take done and everyone seemed happy I was so relieved and still pinching myself to be looking at Zoe and to look at Annie Potts which I was sweating because I've loved Annie Potts since designing women, you know, um, pretty in pink, Ghostbusters. Like it was just like, ah. um, but then once that first one was done and then um, they've been so great about bringing me back. The writing is so good on that show. Like th those scripts come and they don't change. It's so funny. It's so heartfelt. And that cast is amazing. The crew's amazing. Um, I just feel very lucky every time I get to come and play for a little bit. It's, it's been great. You have a new show on Instagram called Quarantine Men Tonight. How, That's right. how do you keep coming up with things that are just so brilliantly funny? Uh, you're so, I love you, by the way. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, maybe because I'm one of the only people that had the Entertainment Tonight theme song on my phone. Like, that's one of my favorite go-to music. Like, I love it. Welcome to Quarantine Men Tonight. On today's show, we're going to talk keeping yourself entertained while sheltering at home. You've already watched all those episodes of The Tiger King on Netflix? Try Zooming with your relatives. It's just as insane. The thing about me, though, is I have no con continuity. I'm not doing one every day, which is, I should be doing one every day, an episode every day, but I just, sometimes I don't have it in me, but, um... Yeah, I just had the entertainment tonight and I was like, quarantine tonight. And again, you're bored. I've got I've got way too many wigs at my house. So I've got props and wigs and I did quarantine tonight. I did a couple of real housewife spoof when I made my husband be a real housewife with me. But yeah, you're you know what, when you're home and you got time. And I always I like to think that I try to go for the funny first, if I can. Like I'd rather be funny than get on there and just complain and stuff. We have nothing to complain about.
whether it's single camera comedy, multi-camera, on your phone, or making soft serve ice cream, we are so happy that, that you are here, Melissa Peterman. Melissa, thank you for being with us. Thank you. This was so much fun. Bye. Melissa oh, did, did I, am I supposed to say goodbye? Or was I just like leaving? Bye. <laughs> don't, don't hang up yet because we okay. have Richard Malmus that's here to tell us who's on the show next week. Richard. Next time on the season finale of Hosts at Home, if you don't know who this game show star is, then you've been living under a rock or under a puzzle board since 1982. We'll chat with the longest running hostess in game show history, Vanna White. And watching won't even cost you a vow. Hmm, back to you, Adam. Thanks, Richard. So excited. Vanna White is here next week. She's got some great stories. You do not want to miss that. Melissa, have you met Vanna White? No. No, I haven't. Thanks for pointing that out. Another thing on my bucket list I have not accomplished. So you need to tune in next week to watch the next Host at Home interview. I will absolutely be tuning in to see Vanna. I love her. If you guys want to watch it, watch it. You just hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to watch it, I don't even want to know you. Okay? I don't want to know you. They can use that. And they definitely watched this episode and they loved this episode. I'm not even going to say it because Melissa said it. Hit subscribe. <laughs> Melissa Peterman has been our guest here on Hosts at Home, and this is definitely one of the funniest episodes we've ever done. You guys know by now, I don't end the show. Melissa, over to you. Take us out. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. I had such a wonderful time. Today's show was brought to you by Ice Coffee and Insomnia. Thank you for having me. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you when I see you. <laughs>